we praise the Lord. And even now, I'm going to ask you just to open your Bible to the book of Psalms, chapter 17. Very popular chapter, Psalms, chapter 17. And I'm going to be reading, reading from verse 1 to 9. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it reads, Hear a just cause, O Lord. Attend to my cry. Give ear to my prayer, which is not from deceitful lips. Let my vindication come from your presence. Let your eyes look on the things that are upright. We're asking God, don't look at the bad stuff about me. You have tested my heart. You have visited me in the night. You have tried me and found nothing. I have purposed that my mouth shall not transgress concerning the works of men. By the word of your lips, I have kept away from the path of the destroyer. How many people know wherever you are that it's the word of God that's keeping you from misbehaving yourself? Uphold my steps in your paths that my footsteps may not slip. I have called upon you for you will hear me. Oh God, incline your ear to me and hear my speech. Show your marvelous loving kindness by your right hand. O oh, you who saves those who trust in you from those who rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings from the wicked who oppress me, from my deadly enemies who surround me. Just bow your heads to me while I pray. Father, I thank you for your word. I believe it will be used to make us perfect. I believe your word will be made perfect in even converting our soul, changing our thinking, changing our attitudes. We pray today, dear Lord God, that you'll allow faith to come alive again. I pray that you will bless every listening ear, dear Lord God. We come against every plan of the enemy that is positioning themselves, posturing themselves to take up the seed of the word which is about to get sown in your people. We come against every plan of the word of the world that will be that will strategize to choke up, dear Lord God, the seed of the word that is about to be, dear Lord God, deposited in your people. Protect the integrity of your word. Because from it, dear Lord God, we gain understanding. And from it, we receive all from you. We shall not live by bread alone, but by the words that proceed from your mouth. So speak, Lord, today. We give you thanks. In the precious, matchless name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you. You may be seated if you're, already, if you're not already seated already. I know many of us are at home. Many of us are probably laying down in our bed watching. That's all good. As long as you are taking in the word of God, it doesn't matter the posture of how you're taking in the word physically, but it's mainly about the posture of your heart and your mind. As long as you're at a place where you can receive God's word you're, you, from a mental place and from a spiritual place, you're fine. And today I want to talk to us about from the topic, being confident in my crisis. Being confident during my crisis. Being confident during my crisis. Many times we go through crises in life and we can look at David and David is always a prime example for these things. I would love to tell you an actual coordinate where the scripture is taken from in regards to David's life as it correlates with this Psalms. But this Psalms, it just fits everywhere in David's life. You can't really say it was happening at this moment in David's life because David's life was filled with these type of situations where he was wrongly accused, where he was looking for justice from the Lord. One thing we could take from David when he was always going through crisis, the person that he would always go to was the Lord. Whenever there's a crisis going on in David's life, he would always go to the Lord. When we look at the Psalms in depthly, bit by bit, you notice the certain words that is used, what David uses to, you know, express what is going on in his life. He says, hear a just cause. David is looking at his situation as an important situation. He's not bringing anything small to God. David doesn't believe that he's bringing anything small to God. 
He believes that it's a just cause. cause. He's saying, God, this is worthy of your ear. And when we look at the other scriptures in the book of Psalms, one of the beautifulest ones, that it says that we are blessed as the people of God because we have God's ear. For us to be confident during our crisis, whatever your crisis may be, you got to have the confidence believing that your situation is important. It is worth bringing it to God. There is no problem that, that could easily discomfort you. That you could possibly assume that God does not care. Everything God does, he cares about you. Every decision God makes, he has you in mind. The Bible tells us of a parable where Jesus was talking about a man who, who wanted a vineyard and he sown a couple of seeds. And then somebody came out of nowhere in the night and planted tares there. Tares are, are weeds that look like weeds, but they're not. Very deceptive. And when the reapers came and saw that there was wheat, weeds inside the, the man's garden, they said, what do you want us to do? Pull out these weeds? And the owner of the vineyard, which represents God, says, no, no, no. Don't pull out those weeds. Because if you pull out those weeds, you will accidentally pull up the tares. This tells us that it doesn't matter what is going on. Whatever the decision God makes, he has us in mind. God always cares. And David brought the situation to God. He said, hear this just cause. And he didn't bring the situation to God in eloquency of speech. This is something we got to learn nowadays that the pretty and cute thing about Christianity will only get you so far. The Bible says that attend unto my cry. Attend unto my cry. What if I told you sometimes you just never prayed hard enough? There are some things that you just can't pray a pretty prayer about and expect God to move. There was times when there were actual demonic things going on in scripture. And Jesus had to tell his disciples, regular prayer can't fix this. It has to be done through prayer and fasting. There are some things that, and I want to let you know, sometimes that when you're going through a crisis and you're trying to go about it from a spiritual place, sometimes you're not doing the wrong thing. You're doing the right thing, but you're not doing the right thing enough. David makes it abundantly clear is that I'm not praying this thing cute. I'm not being cute about it. Attend unto my cry. And I want to let you know that God hears our cries. There's something about when a child cries and when the parent hears the cries, how the parent quickly moves. How the parent would rise up from whatever they are doing. And they will go and see what is wrong with the child. Sometimes you got to understand if you cry enough. If you cry enough. It will move God. Sometimes you felt like it was just I just have to say in Jesus name. Yes there's power in Jesus name. But disciples when they were trying to rebuke devils. Jesus name wasn't cutting it. There are some things that has to be done through prayer and fasting. Sometimes we have to go a little bit more. We're not downgrading the name of Jesus Christ. But remember, the Bible said that God even said, I esteem my word above my name. The name of Jesus is a powerful name. But the word of God will always reign supreme. Many things will pass away, but God's word remains. God's words remain. And I'm saying this to say that David cried out to God. He cried out to God. And when you're going through your crisis, you got to understand you can't be cute about it. You got to cry out to God and, 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 make, and understand and be confident that your situation is ear worthy to God. It's earworthy to God. David said, hear a just cause. Hear my just cause. He cried out to God. And notice that when he cried out to God, he looked at his own lifestyle. He said, give ear to my prayer, which is not from deceitful lips. How many people don't understand, I realize nowadays, that how you walk is so important in regards to how much God can move. I'll say it again. How you walk, how you live, it's very important. 
in regards to how quick God will move and how much God will hear. I can imagine everybody in the TV room wondering, that's not true. Well, the Bible says that if I don't regard the iniquity in my heart, God will not hear me. You are crying. You're praying God's word. But what is the condition of your heart? What is the condition of your lips? David said that you are God. Can you hear my prayer? Which is not from deceitful lips. One of the Psalms is declared that it says that search me, O God, know my heart, try me and know my anxieties and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. God knows that there's wicked ways in us, but David was confident that God would hear his prayer because he knows his lips was not deceitful. When you look at the life of David, when David was running from Saul, the amount of times he could have got the throne a crooked way. But he chose the high road. And when you're going through your crisis and when you're going through situations, never ever take the low road. Don't allow situations to, to disturb who you are. You are a child of God. And this is why the Bible said the people of this world are wiser than the children of God. Why? Because when the world is going through their problems, they know to work their systems. And as people of God, we have to know how to work our systems as well. As long as my heart and my hands are not deceitful, God will always be willing to bless. What we call now, what I call that nowadays are people who have Jacob's voice and Esau's hands. Very deceitful. Very deceitful. They sound like Jacob, but they have the feel of Esau. They sound like something, but they don't look like something. Video and audio doesn't line up. And David is saying that because my prayer is not coming from a deceitful lip. I know, God, you will hear me. I know, God, you will hear me. Because when the time when I could have killed Saul, I didn't. Because he was still king. He was still the anointed. When I could have done this, I chose not to do it. I want to let you know, the amount of times where you take the high road, God sees that. And that guarantees answered prayer. Because that's scripture. You can't be living the life of God and God will not hear your prayer. This is why Hezekiah, when he was in his deathbed, he knew that he could go to God. Because long life, health and strength was promised to the just. Not to the ungodly. And ungodly kings were living longer than him. So he went to God and brought his lifestyle to God. And God honored him. And I want to let you know, whatever your crisis may be in your life. If you are not going to a crisis now, probably this word is for in the future. So that way, when, you, when things go wrong, you know how to behave yourself. You got to have the confidence to believe that God will hear your prayer. And when you pray that prayer, you don't pray it cute. You cry out to God. There are some things that is just worth shedding a tear for. Our problem in life is that we don't know what the difference. We don't know what's worth shedding a tear for. But when you're going through your crisis and you have to cry out to God, that is the best time for you to shed a tear. Not for anxiety. Wondering if God is going to hear you. Because he will hear you. This is all about confidence during a crisis. You got to believe that God hears you. And you got to have confidence in your walk. You got to be able to say, God, my mouth is not deceitful. God, I don't steal. Because in life, if you're going to confess your sins, you might as well confess your right too to him. He's very much interested in that as well. He's very much interested in that as well. You've got to have confidence in your crisis. Confidence that God will hear you. Confidence that your lifestyle is pleasing to him. Pleasing to him. The Bible said that David required God to be his vindicator. He didn't want no one else to fight for him. He didn't want to get out of his situation out of, on his own strength, on his own merit. He said, God, I want you to be my defender. I want you to stand for me. 
And when you go into a crisis, and sometimes some of our crises have to deal with people. Sometimes people could do some hurtful things to us. Sometimes they, they're the origin to the problem. And you can't allow to follow the eye for an eye theory. Because going for an eye for an eye will leave everybody blind. You got to be able to stand back and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord move in your life. David was going through a crisis. And whatever the crisis may be, it is not really expressed in this text. But what I do glean from this text, David oozed confidence. He had confidence in his God. He had confidence in the fact that God will hear him. And he had confidence in the word of God. He didn't really have confidence really in himself. And that's what I loved about this Psalms. The, the, the amount of confidence I see in this text. And none was actually directed to himself. His hope and his trust and his confidence was in God. The Bible said in verse 3 and 4, he said, You have tested my heart. You have visited me in the night. You have tried me and have found nothing. I have purposed that my mouth shall not transgress concerning the works of men. By the word of your lips, I have kept away from the paths of the destroyer. There are three things I want to ask you. Because the Bible said that God has tested David's heart and have visited him in the night. You got to ask yourself this question when you're going through a crisis. And you're looking for help from people. And you're looking for help from God. Three simple questions. Do you allow God to test your heart? Can I be corrected? That's question number two. Will I listen to others when they tell me that I might be wrong? That is three. Because many of us have crises. Many of us go through problems. But what happens when you are the problem? What happens when you are the origin of the problem? Bad spending habits. Natural proclivities to sin. And the Bible said, the curse cometh not without a cause. Sometimes things happen in life because of what we have done. And sometimes people are trying to show that to us. But one of our greatest problems when we're trying to get out of crises is, is that sometimes God can't speak to us. God can't correct us. Definitely not through people. Sometimes nowadays it seems like nobody, God can't send somebody to go speak to us. But David said, you have tested my heart. You have tested my heart. God wants to test your heart. When is the last time you measured your heart to the word of God? Because that's really what God tests us by. That is the measuring stick. This is the confidence we got to have. Understanding that God tests my heart. He tried me and found nothing. God tested my heart. He tried me and found nothing. And I'm praying today, understanding that this is through the word of God that gives us direction to where we need to go. But it's the grace of God that enables us to stay on that road. So when God tells us, when the word of God says that he found nothing, it's not that God could not find anything wrong with David. But grace abounded more where sin could have abounded in our lives. And the only reason why God is not finding anything wrong with us, it is because of the grace of God. It is because of the grace of God why we are not consumed. Why we are not deceived. David said that his prayers that went, went even from deceitful lips. Deceit is a hell of a, hell of a thing. Because sometimes we, are, we get deceit. We fall into deceit thinking that the situation that we're going through, we deserve it. And that's not the case. There's nothing that you have done wrong that could cause you to go through a crisis. But God will allow us to go through crises, crisis to show how strong he is and that he is the God of the, over the grave. He is the God over the calamity. The Bible said that he purposed our mouths so that we, not, so that we don't transgress. I want to stay there for one quick second because sometimes in our, in our crises, we say things that we shouldn't say and we dig ourselves in deeper holes. I purpose, David said that I conditioned my mouth so I would not, I would not transgress 
concerning the works of men. By the word of your lips, I have kept away from the paths of the destroyer. It is the word of God that keeps our mouths. It is the word of God that keeps us from behaving like certain people that we don't aspire to be like. Consider David. David was on the run. He had to protect his family, his friends, and himself from Saul, while at the same time trying not to be like Saul. If it wasn't for the word of God in David's life, who knows the type of person David would have became through all those crises he was going through. If it had not been for the word of God that was so accessible to you, that inspired you to live this life, where would you be? Some of us don't notice the word of God that's keeping us from the paths of the destroy. If it wasn't for the word of God, the amount of things we would probably say and do to people who has hurted us. If it wasn't for the word of God, where would our mind be in the midst of crisis, in the midst of calamity, in the midst of trouble? The Bible said it is the word of God. It's a lamp onto our feet and a light to our path. And we need to embrace the word of God. Embrace the word of God. I won't be long today. We have to embrace the word of God in the midst of our crisis. The Bible said in verse 5, that upholding my steps in your paths, that my footsteps may not slip. And that's something we need to understand. Because while we're going through crises, we think that life is messed up. We feel like, okay then, because I'm going through this, God doesn't have a plan for me. But you notice how David says, uphold my steps in your paths. That my, footsteps may not, that my footsteps may not slip. Uphold my steps in your paths. That my footsteps may not slip. Know what David's trying to say? The path is good. The problem is the conditioning of my feet. The path that God leads me, it's good. That's why I want you to uphold me and keep me on that path. The issue with my life is that sometimes my, my steps, how I move, it makes me slip. And I want us to understand today that the path that God has laid out for you, it's a good path. Is it always a comfortable path? No. Is it always a happy path? No. Is it always a smooth ride? No. But it's a good path. The only issue with the path is sometimes our feet slip. The problem is not the path. The problem is not the journey. Sometimes it's us. Sometimes it's us. Sometimes it's us. What if I told you the best way, the, good, the best cause you can bring to God, the best reason to cry out to God is to God to fix me. Fix me. I'm in a crisis and I need you, God, to keep me on the straight and now. Because if I come out of your umbrella, I don't know what life is going to look like tomorrow. Keep me under your umbrella. And you got to have that confidence in God, believing that the path that he's leading me on is for his namesake. So therefore, he would not want me to fail. Because if I fail, it would make him look bad. But the path that he's leading me on, it's a righteous path and it's a great path. But the only problem is sometimes we can slip. We can fall into danger. And we need God to hold us up and to bear us up. So the good path that he leads us on, we will not abort it with our natural proclivities, with our natural tendencies. If you believe that wherever you are, say amen. If you believe that you need God to keep you, the path that he's leading you on, it's a great path. The journey is great, but it's just sometimes I slip. The crisis makes me slip. The crisis makes me come out of who I really am. And you got to have confidence during a crisis. You got to be confident that God hears you. You got to be confident that the lips that you use are pure. And you're confident about it because you lived that life. You put in that work. You did that sacrifice. When you could have said any other word that you could possibly find in a King James Bible, you choose to speak right. It's customary at Kings where we always say at the end of our service, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. I want to let you know today 
that despite any discomfort you may be feeling, whatever crisis you may have, the journey that God allowed you to go on is a good journey. It's a great journey. The problem is sometimes we have a tendency to slip. We have a tendency to slip. We have a tendency to make mistakes. But in all of my baffling, I want to close off with this last verse. When well, the Bible says that, despite my tendencies to slip, despite the crisis I had, David not, didn't only have crisis. Read the Bible. It says there in the text, the enemies were also surrounding him, looking to take his life. When you think that you just have a little problem, understand the devil is out there to take your life. And you, that's the worst crisis you could possibly be in. Jesus said, I've already overcame the world. The world can't outtake you. The Bible said that Jesus overcame death. Death is just another doorway, another phase into a different aspect of living called eternity. The crisis I believe that we are in, that we need to have our confidence in, is, is a crisis, is the crisis of the enemy trying to take away our lives. Jesus came that you may have life and have it, in, have it in its abundance. Your greatest crisis you're in right now is the devil's trying to rob you of that life. The devil's doing everything he could possibly can, David, to make sure you don't sit on that throne. You don't become the possessor of what God believed for you to have. And the best way for you to be a possessor of that is very simple. Number one, any situation you're going through, bring it to God. David walked up to God and said, hear this just cause. He said, God, man, God, you got to hear this. Attend unto my cry. Cry out to God. Enough with the cute stuff. Cry out to God. There are some issues that you can't be cute about. Especially when you want to fix your life. When you go to the gym and you want to get and fix yourself, it's nothing cute about it. You sweat, you go, you go in there good and you leave sore. But at the end of the day, when you look it all over, you, you end up better. You end up better. You end up better. David said in closing, keep me as the apple of your eye. Do you know how protected God made the body so the eye stays protected? David is saying, God, keep me as the apple of your eye. Keep me protected. Keep me protected during this crisis. Many times we make the mistake and ask God to take me out of the crisis. Not knowing the crisis was there to forge you, to shape you. God's fire is a purifying fire. God's fire will never burn out the believer, but it will forge the believer into the person that they believe and to the person that God intended them to be. And God wants to give you more than loving kindness. The Bible talks about marvelous loving kindness by your right hand. Despite your crisis that you could possibly be going through right now, God wants to shower upon you loving kindness, marvelous loving kindness. And he wants to keep you as the apple of his eyes. God wants to protect you through any situation, but you have to be confident in him, God is saying. Be confident in me, God is saying. Trust that I will hear you. Trust that I understand the life you live. Trust that I am assessing you day by day. David said, you tested me today. You tested me by night. God is assessing you. You will always be under the magnifying glass of God because you are not only a co-laborer with him, you are also his husbandry, the Bible said. God is building you. He is building you. He is building you. And sometimes he will use crises problems to build you trust the hand of the potter understand that you are still the apple of his eye that is the most protected part of our body the eye the eye the eye and God is saying that I'm going to protect you and keep you as the apple of my eye as, as much as I protect my eye I'm going to protect you from the wicked who oppress you from the deadly enemies who surround me. You don't even know that you have enemies around you. God is protecting you from them. I want to let you know today that if you have confidence during your crisis, God will move on your behalf. 
Because the journey is good. The journey is great. The journey is fruitful. The problem is that sometimes we slip. And we need God to protect us during our crisis times so we don't slip. So when other people in my ears telling me to go kill Saul, I don't do it. Because God's word keeps me. God's word sustains me. And it's God's words that shapes me. I want to see everybody just wherever they are, just lift your hands and bow your heads. This is a small word. But it's a word I believe that's impactful for every, every individual. It may not be a word for now, but hopefully, not hopefully, I'm not wishing calamity for, on anybody. But if it does happen, we know how to conduct ourselves. I'm going to pray a prayer that God will sustain you during crisis. Father, I pray today for every individual that is listening to the sound of my voice. I pray today that whatever the crisis may be, it could be financial, it could be relational. It could be with work, oh Lord God. Sometimes work can stress us out. It's funny how the thing that we choose to choose for us to make a living could sometimes end up killing us. Overworked creates a crisis within our own personal world. I pray that we will be confident, dear Lord God, in this one thing, knowing that you hear our prayers, knowing that you assess our lifestyle, Knowing that, dear Lord God, we will be confident that the journey that you put us on is a good journey. Uphold us. Keep us on this path. My only prayer, dear Lord God, for every individual, that you will not allow them to slip. You will never allow them to abort the process. You will allow them to go through the fire. Because your fire is not designed to burn us out. But it's designed to forge us into the people you intended us to be. I thank you, dear Lord God. For this word it ministered to me i believe it's ministering to everyone else wherever they are i feel confidence rising in homes rising in marriages they're believing that they can overcome this they're believing that this too will pass because your word declared that you are keeping us as the apple of your eye you are protecting us and as mountains are around jerusalem so shall you be around us keep us from the wicked ones keep us from our enemies give us a discerning heart to know who is for us and who is against us father i thank you we give you all the glory and honor and praise believing that you will lead us into greener pastures where we're presently are right now you're leading us into a better place and we thank you for that in jesus name wherever you are just say amen and if you don't know the person of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you today understand that the best crisis management is Jesus Christ, having him in your life, having him to hear your prayer, having them to keep you on the straight and narrow, I want to pray this prayer for you. Father, your word declared, if any man hears your word, they ought not to harden their hearts. I pray that in the strong name of Jesus Christ, that you will deliver every individual you will dear lord god make your humble abode into the hearts of any individual that opens out to you i pray dear lord god that you will fill them with your holy spirit make them new but when they are in you they are a new creation new creation all things have passed away behold everything is new i pray you will not allow the sin crisis to overwhelm them but they will receive your grace and they will walk in the newness of life from this time forth and forevermore. And if you believe that, wherever you are, just say amen. I hope this blessed you. It blessed me. Crisis has happened all the time. We always go through problems. One thing we can know, that God hears us and he's keeping us on the straight and narrow. And whatever the path that we're going on during the, our, our crisis and problems, always remember it's a great path. The only problem sometimes we can slip. But God's grace is sufficient to keep us. God's word gives us direction. But it is God's grace that keeps us on that road. You stay blessed. And I trust that you'll enjoy the rest of your week. God bless you. What can I say? That was such a powerful service that we just had. I am confident that you are going to go throughout this week differently even as you apply this word to your life. 
And if you do not want to wait until Sundays in order to fellowship with us, remember that we gather every Tuesday at 7.30 for Bible studies and every Friday at 8 p.m. for our prayer meetings. To obtain the Zoom link for either session, please send your email to admin at kclcministries.org. And if you feel led to join our COVID-19 response teams in any capacity, please visit the Kingsway website for a full list of role descriptions and send your email to admin at kclcministries.org with your name and contact information. Thank you so much for watching our service today. I hope you were as blessed as I was and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Take care. And as we go into a week with a new mindset and a fresh word over us, I just want to send you off with a blessing this morning. Hallelujah. And may the Lord remember his covenant with us this morning. Thank you, Jesus.
their children and their children. May his favor be upon you and the thousand generations and your family and their children and their children, the children. May his favor be upon you and the thousand generations and your family yeah, and your children, God, and their children. And their children, may his presence go before.